Hello everyone. This is Mel Balsamo with Kadabra Software here again to present to you this week's webinar. And today we'll be talking about saving attachments into subfolders for each InfoPath form. Before we start, let me give you a quick overview of what Kadabra has to offer. We first, uh, of course, have an infopathdev.com. That's your free forum. If you ever need, um, like if you have complex forms and you need uh, extensive help, then you can opt to purchase or pay as you go support. And rest assured that you'll be in good hands with our, with, because we have a couple MVPs in our team and also a bunch of tools and templates to jumpstart your infopath projects. We're here, we're here to build the gaps between InfoPath and SharePoint, so we're here to help you with your daily battles in your InfoPath lives. We also have training classes, so do contact qdsales at qdabber.com for more information on that. Without further ado, let's get started. So today we'll learn how you can create subfolders from your InfoPath browser form. We're going to use the DWS web service. This is an out-of-the-box SharePoint web service. And we'll also learn how you can save attachments, files, and images into those subfolders using your save to SharePoint command. Why are we interested in doing this first? Just by looking at the images on the screen here, on the left, you'll see a really messy desk full of files, unorganized files, right? We want to create subfolders for all our forms or all our files and images in SharePoint, just like how this uh, other picture on the right is trying to show us. It's, it's, um, it's a container full of folders, and each folder has labels, right? So if you're looking for a file, you're not going to have problems doing that. And how are we going to do that? Like I mentioned, we're going to use the SharePoint web service. It's uh, the DWS web service. You're going to see we have a bunch of operations here, a bunch of methods here. But today, we're only interested with the create folder method. This is the method that's going to create the folders for us, at, as its name implies. How about saving files to SharePoint? Most of you are probably familiar with the QRule save to SharePoint command. It allows you to save files or a set of files, meaning repeating um, group of files, right, or even images into SharePoint. And we do have a video tutorial out there. This is the link to that guy and also a documentation. If you fill out the feedback form today, you're going to get the slide deck together with a sample so you can have access to those links. And I don't have any anything much to explain really. There's not much any technicalities in here, so let's proceed to our demo. Okay, so right now you're seeing my test SharePoint site and in here I have published the I hope a simple InfoPath form. And yeah, so this is a, a webinar, I call this a webinar kits form. And what this will do is it will save, um, it will create the folders in my SharePoint library and also save my attachments. Um, this date, so I'm filling out the fields here. Um, I guess this, for example, the topic will be the, the folder name and the presenter as well. We're concatenating that. Later, I'm going to show you the rules behind this info platform. I do have something special going on with this date picker. Like if I select, um, you know that our webinars are done every Thursdays of the week. So what if I'm so lazy to select that Thursday, right? I can just pick any date in here for that week and it will auto select the Thursday for that week I selected just like that. And if I will try again here, select Tuesday, it will default to 21st, which is a Thursday. So let's go back to 14. And that's happening uh, via Q rules again. That's called the uh, get weekday command. Just something to spice things up a little bit, I guess. So in this folder, I want to upload my demo files, right, for 
this week's webinar. Uh, let me add one more file in here. I will attach my slide deck. And we'll wait till it gets uploaded. Here we go, and we are ready. We have a cancel button that really doesn't do anything. It just closes out the form without saving anything out. So we want to do upload. Click on that button, and this form will close. It saved the form into the library. And then let's check our webinar files folder. This is where the files are supposed to go. And it did create that folder with the concatenated name, with the date, and the topic that I entered, and also my name. Since I'm the presenter, let's open that up. And it sa saved my files in there. Okay, and if I open, go back to my form in here, reopen it, now I see that those files are not in the, in the form itself, in the XML itself. Instead, we return the, the links. So the save to SharePoint command actually is very handy. It, it likes reduces the size of your forms because, again, the attachments are not saved in the XMLs themselves, but um, rather the, just the links, right? So um, I know you might be interested with subfolders, so let me, I also created um, a sample for that. Let me show you. This will create a folder inside a folder, so subfolders. So I'll just fill out the same stuff in here. Actually, I don't have that. Let's just do this, test subfolder. I'm the presenter again, and I'll select the same date and attach just one file this time. Okay, and let's upload. So the form got saved. We'll check our files folder. It saved one top folder, the parent folder, which has the date as its name, and another folder inside it, which is the subfolder, and there's my file. So, yeah, it's up to you how many, like, levels of folders you want to create, but this is the form in the designer, and we'll show you how that is all done. We'll look at the data connections first. And in here you can see, let me zoom in for a better view. So we have the create folder data connection. And like, as you can see down here under the details, it's connecting to the dws.asmx web service. Again, it's a SharePoint out of the box web service. And we're using the create folder operation. And we got Q rules in there. And, of course, the SharePoint library submit the same form into our SharePoint library where it's published to. And let's look at this upload button. The first actions are happening in this button, right? So let's look at the rules here. We are first setting the folder name. And that is just like you've seen, we're concatenating the date, the topic, and the presenter as the title or the folder name. Next, we are creating the folder. And to create the folder, we are setting that, you are, that URL parameter of the create um, folder web service. Let's just look at the details on that guy. So that parameter, the URL parameter, and it will be the name of your um, document library. I hope you're not getting dizzy with what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, that will be the name of our document library and then the title, which is the folder name. Okay, we want to say, we're telling the web service to create the folder in that location, right? And then we call the create folder web service. We query it. And next up is the upload files rules, uh, rule. And here we are just setting this upload um, node, which is a part of the repeating file attachment group, to go. We are just setting a trigger because we want um, we want the rules. We got the rules in that upload attribute that you know loops through all the file attachments. How many um, attachments you have in there? So let's look at that rule next. Let's look at that uh, field rule. 
So we got upload and um, here's where we are calling the save to SharePoint command. So that's your syntax. You specify the URL and for the URL I'm using the the SharePoint site URL function. Starting InfoPath 2010 you got this nice little function called SharePoint site URL and it will return um, wherever the form is published to it will return um, the URL. Yeah, how convenient. So you don't have to like hard code in there like HTTP and your SharePoint site and all that. You can just use that function. And then this URL um, field here is the one I was I set my create folder um, parameter with and then my XPath to the file attachment row num here the, I got a default value in that row num that just you know um, it increments depending on it's basically the row number which increments depending on how many rows you have how many file attachment rows you have Okay, so I'm telling the command to save this, uh, save my files to that URL. And then there's just a little reset self rule here to make sure that I don't um, encounter an infinite loop error and whatnot. So after uploading the files, I go and save my form to SharePoint. And that's about it. That's how the magic works. Um, someone asked before, before this webinar, I got an email from support. I think it's from Gail. If this works in InfoPath 2013, uh, sorry, in SharePoint 2013, and it does work, subfolders get created as well. But note that for SharePoint 2013 browser forms, your InfoPath forms that are injected with clear rules should be full trust and should be admin deployed. That's the, the only thing special. Um, yeah, so that's been our demo. And we move on to questions. Let's look at our questions box here. Don't tell me we don't have questions again. I'll give you time to ask questions. <laughs> All right, so we got one from Even. So no go for Office 365. I didn't say that. Actually, I think it will work for Office 365. But again, it your InfoPath form that's injected with Q rules need to be full trust and admin deployed. All right, that that one I tested only in SharePoint 2013, but I'm not sure with Office 365 if that's the same case. But it surely will work. Like creating folders and also save to SharePoint. You can't admin deploy with Office 365. If I'm not mistaken, there was like an alternate method. I tried that myself, but I, I can't recall correctly. I will get back to you on that even. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. You can't admin deploy in Office 365, but I think there's an alternative. You're welcome. Um, from Peter, could this basic structure be used to save to a file share? Yes, there is actually a method um, wherein you can use the save to SharePoint command even though you don't have a SharePoint library or a SharePoint site. But yeah, I think you can. Al there's also a method to create the folders, but I just haven't tried that myself, so I can't. I can't guarantee for sure. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Evan says that he thinks he knows the answer already. Office 365 sandboxes it. So, yeah, there is indeed a way. From Jenea, could this also be used to create and save to document sets? I'm not sure what you mean by document sets. Not sure what you meant by document sets, Jania. Um, it does work saving. 
images and files to document libraries and picture libraries. Okay, Jania says the type of folder in SharePoint with meta tags. I am not really sure, but um, I remember this. I've done this before when I only, I, I didn't want to like save my files. To only save my files, I also wanted to save some meta tags with it. So along with the save to SharePoint command, we used um, the submit to SharePoint list command because uh, we we created what we did there. We created a, diff a separate list that has the the attachment link and then some some properties like some some tags, some meta tags for that for the file themselves. And we submit those properties via submit to SharePoint list. Will we get a web kit with this demo? Yep, sure you can if vet. Just make sure to fill out that feedback form at the end of this demo. From John Moore, if a user goes back and adds new files, will a new folder be created every time or will this setup continue to add to the folder created initially? Good question. How why did why didn't I show that? Yeah, so let's go ahead and edit one of our, this saved um, form here. So we know that it already created the folder for us, right? So what we're expecting is that it's not going to recreate another folder. Instead, it will save to that same one. So let's attach a different um, file this time. This time I want to, I think that's a big fo file. Attach a different file and re-upload and check our folder. So we still got that same folder and we got that new file in there. So I hope that answers your questions. question. And by the way, if you open up your form there with the links to the attachments and click on the links, it will open the file will open depending on the file associations between your browser and your machine. So like if I open this PPTX file, it's trying to open PowerPoint for me here. So if I open that, there you go. Will this work with IP2007 from Yvette? If uh, I believe if IP2007 support folders, and I guess I believe it should, right? then yes, it works with InfoPath 2007. So that's the file that opened. Okay. I'm glad that you guys are asking questions this time or else I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> okay. Are there any more questions, though? I think that's it. Thank you for participating there. We'll move on to the next slide, which is, yeah, our webinar kit. And someone just asked, you get this uh, free webinar kit for today because you attended the webinar and you will send feedback for sure. So you get this uh, the kit for today for free. And if you ever miss this webinar for some reason, you can purchase it for a really cheap price or you can subscribe annually as well. So go to that link to purchase our web kits. And thank you everyone for attending this webinar. It's yet another wonderful experience for me. Thank you and don't forget to fill that feedback form out and I wish to talk to you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.